Hello, my name's Christina, the editor of Koi Kart magazine. Welcome to the 2006 BKKS National. The British Koi Keepers Society National Show has always been by far the largest and most important date in the UK's Koi calendar. Held once more at the Newark Showground, the event was staged over the weekend of the 24th and 25th of June 2006. Now in its 31st year, the show attracts many hobbyists from across the country, also from Europe and further afield, all eager to see the way the BKKS stages their show. As you can imagine, such an event is many months in planning and requires a great deal by way of both logistics and human manpower. This year's show chairman was again the highly popular Wayne Eady, and as he explains, achieving this was by no means an easy feat. The show itself started, there's, there's actually only been 15 people um, all week working a minimum 12 hour shift, uh, sometimes 15, 16 hours. Uh, it's not been, uh, the hobby itself is supposed to be enjoyable, but for 15 people to set up this show on 12 hour shifts is, is not good. Um, we really need to address this next year and I really would like some uh, new helpers in uh, at least another 10. But the, the show team uh, and the helpers and the committee have been absolutely immense. It's no secret that the BKKS itself has seen a decline in its membership over the past few years, something which in truth has been brought about by a variety of reasons. The committee were therefore eager to make sure that the 2006 event would be a real success in every way, from the koi entered in the show itself right through to the visiting dealers who occupied the outer ring of marquees. By mid-morning Saturday the showground was beginning to fill and it was time for the judges to begin the considerable task of selecting the various koi that would be receiving prizes. The industry outside Japan has always taken guidance from the Far East and as such the choice of the grand champion was the first to be decided. The judges took a preliminary look around the vats and noted any fish that particularly caught their eye and that could possibly be in contention for this tremendous accolade. The hobby in the UK these days is at such a level that realistically only the very, very top percentage of koi that cross these shores are in with a chance of the top award. Such koi are some of the best to ever leave Japan and the quality of the grand champions rises each year. Chairman of the judges Gary Pritchard explains just how close it was in 2006. If you wanted to say who was in with a chance you might go up to 12 but five were really, really singing. The koi in this show, like, like every year, it, it gets better. It amazes me where they actually find these fish from, you know. Um, the economy's going down and the koi quality's going up, so someone's robbing banks somewhere, that's all I can say. But uh, the quality there, once again, is improved, and on the bigger sizes as well. And not everyone's grown a size three to a size six. Some people are getting a size four and really bringing them on, and, and it's really noticeable. I don't know, I like to see fish that come back. Of, Irrespective of size, I like to see fish that have come back that have improved or are a better quality. Whether they win or not is irrelevant, but it just shows the standard of koi keepers getting better. As anyone knows, any fish that wins is a kahaku sanki or shao because they're the go sanki. I don't like them. So you're asking the wrong person. I like Yamabuki Ogans. They're plain, they're simple, and I think they're fantastic. And that is what the hobby should be, what you like. But as a judge, no. You've got to go for kahaku sanki shao. They will always be the top ones because they're harder to breed. They're harder to breed, they're harder to keep. If one dies in your pond, it's going to be one of those because they're weaker genetically. So we always like to see them coming on and getting better. But I like to see a spread across the board as well. I think a, a vat full of ghost sankies is very boring. The quality of the koi was indeed high in all sizes, yet as ever it was the ghost sanky varieties that dominated the judges' thoughts. The public were eager to view the koi entered in the show and a great deal of discussion and banter between the visitors ensued over the course of the weekend. This is one of the greatest things about the hobby, the fact that the quality of any given koi is ultimately subjective and therefore has the potential for tremendous debate. The Grand Champion is of course the most important award in the show 
and once that had been decided, the judges broke off into similar groups and began to slowly work their way through the rest of the entries. With 357 fish to be judged, quite a day lie ahead for them. Normally there are seven size groupings, but in 2006, in a very forward-thinking and exciting move, the committee decided to make a slight amendment to this. Well, this year, because of the population of koi last year, 42% of the uh, koi last year were size five, which is the, the adult champion bracket. Um, and so it was considered that, that there was a lot of high grade koi not being recognized. So I guess I've slightly bent the rules um, because procedurally sh things should happen, but um, what I've done is, there's actually eight sizes, but really there's only seven, but what I've done is split one of the sizes into A and B, which allows for 42 more awards, which is great for the exhibitor because, um, you know, there's a lot more awards there. As the day continued and more and more of the public swarmed into the showground, the trade stands began to get busy and a brisk trade was reported by many of the dealers. There is such a wide diversity of products associated with koi keeping and visitors were able to purchase all they needed to assist them in their hobby. The level of knowledge displayed by the majority of the dealers is also incredibly high and they are more than willing to offer help and advice on any aspect of koi keeping. Many have attended the BKKS National for in excess of 15 years, some even longer, and there are tremendous support for the industry in this country. Koi Carp is the world's largest magazine dedicated to Nishikigoi, and the freestyle publication stand was bustling with visitors throughout the weekend. Many new subscriptions were taken out, and just as importantly, far more were renewed, the British koi keeping public clearly showing its support of the publication. The magazine also had on offer various items of koi merchandise, and its close and ongoing affiliation with the society is an incredibly positive element within the industry. As the public entered the showground, they passed through a covered craft area and a number of outdoor stands selling items that perfectly complemented the koi pond. The link between koi and bonsai is quite obvious and is one many hobbyists exploit to the full, often having a collection of these miniature trees to rival their koi. Other items for the garden were also on sale, many with an oriental touch to them. The first stand that visitors encountered as they entered the show arena was that of the BKKS itself and the Society registered many new members over the course of the two days. The UK promotes koi keeping from a very early age and all are welcomed at their events. The Society exists solely to benefit its members and whilst the past few years have been somewhat difficult, the BKKS believe that they've turned a corner and the future indeed looks bright. Um, but uh, I'm quite optimistic about the future of the BKKS. I think it, it, it has taken something of a dive um, over the past few years uh, but I really do feel it, it's a case of having the right, as I always phrase it, the right mechanics in the right positions uh, to listen and understand what people want um, and that is something I think is now in place and, and the society itself will, will go forward. As the judges continue their complex task more and more visitors gathered around the show vats to catch a glimpse of the koi entered. Whilst it's very difficult to talk to the judges whilst they're working, for obvious reasons, there were many other show officials on hand who were more than happy to discuss the various merits of any koi present. On the Sunday too, many of the judges were there to discuss their decisions in more detail. It's only through the sharing of such information that the next generation of koi keepers will take up the mantle and the members of the JSC were more than happy to discuss at length any aspect of the hobby with visitors in an attempt to help and inform. The quality of koi entered was, as always, very high indeed and the visiting public were treated to an excellent display of fish, virtually right across the spectrum. Many people had travelled from other parts of Europe to visit the show and felt that the event lived up to its normal high standards. The quality of the fish, generally uh, there's been larger fish this year than John normally. Uh, I think that the quality is a little bit better than, than general, it's all in all quite okay. The European shows are much smaller, 
and the fish are not as good as these ones. Denmark is uh, a little bit behind on the koi. Uh, it would be nicer if they were more into quality than quantity. Hopefully we can do it a little bit better. One of the things uppermost in the minds of the show organisers is the health and well-being of the fish entered, and as such the BKKS had a dedicated team of people whose sole task over the course of the weekend was to ensure that the water in the show vats remained at the very highest level. Testing was ongoing and there were large reservoirs of fresh, purified water which could replace the existing water as and when the need arose. One of the most prominent trade exhibitors at the event were Evolution Aqua, who had put a great deal of effort into their stand, something that clearly paid off, as visitors took the opportunity to peruse the company's products at great length. One of the most ingenious ideas implemented at this year's National was the use of the Army Cadets, who were on hand to help visitors transport any large purchases, be it dry goods or actual koi, from the showground to their vehicle. Transporting koi to and from the show is obviously very important and needs to be undertaken with the utmost of care. The dealers in general tended to bring the smaller sizes of koi and this was something appreciated by the public who responded by snapping up the bargains that were on offer. Such an event as the National gives dealers the opportunity to present their products to hobbyists from all over the country and as such many special offers are available. It's been known for many a hobbyist to buy a year's supply of koi food at the National, in doing so saving quite a sum. Another popular attraction over the course of the weekend was the koi water barn marquee, which contained the actual Grand Champions trophy from this year's All Japan Show, the largest koi event in the world. The company had supplied the Sakai Kohaku that took the prize, and both Mark Crampton and Martin Plows, who purchased the fish, were on the stand signing copies of the DVD release of the film that was made about the historic event. The fact that they were the first Westerners ever to win the All Japan had not gone unnoticed or unrecognised by the BKKS. A fitting tribute to a remarkable achievement. I would, I would have put money against that ever happening. I just can't believe it. I mean, I'm still excited now and it's, a, you know, it's so long ago. Whether it'll happen again, I don't know, but yeah, fantastic. I don't think there's jealousy, I think there's a lot of pride in that because, I mean, it's the first time it's been done uh, as far as Westerners to, to, to win outside of Japan. It, it's unknown. Um, and then certainly when I saw DVD with these guys on it, I was filled with a lot of pride and, and happiness for them because it, it's something that they've been aspiring to get. I mean, they actually don't know it yet, but... Um, we, we have a dinner dance tonight. Um, I've sorted out a little bit of crystal um, with their names on it, so don't go telling them. In an attempt to promote the hobby yet further, a lecture theatre had been set up in which various high profile names within the industry spoke about their own area of expertise. All lectures were well attended and everyone was able to learn something new about koi keeping. By the Sunday morning, there was only one koi that everyone was talking about, and that was the magnificent Sai 7 Kohaku that had taken the Grand Champion Prize. Bred by Takigawa and supplied by Yume Koi, the eight-year-old fish looked simply stunning as it swam in its vat, lapping up the attention it was getting. The fish is owned by John Helens, who also took the Mature Champion Prize with a Momotaro Sankey, quite a feat in itself. A fantastic koi and one worthy of the title, BKKS National Grand Champion 2006. Despite the fact that England were playing in the second round of the World Cup on the Sunday, the 2006 BKKS National was a resounding success. Everyone agreed, visitors, dealers and committee members alike, that the society is heading in the right direction once more and can now only go from strength to strength. Credit must go to Wayne and his dedicated team of workers, without whose tremendous level of input this show would never have been staged. Great weather, great people, and most of all, great koi. Perhaps it's fitting that the last word goes to Wayne himself. What we need to do is to provide more privileges for BKKS members. Um, and, and that's what we're all about, and, and having a good time around Koi. 
um, and try and leave the politics at home. Whether you're new to koi keeping or you're an experienced hobbyist, there's something for everybody in Koi Cart magazine. So if you want to look over the garden fence at Reader's Ponds, check out the latest equipment, or get the latest news from the industry or the British Koi Keepers Society, it's all there. It's always best to be a subscriber so you can make use of our great free offers. Currently, if you take out a direct debit for only £8 a quarter, you get two Masterclass DVDs completely free. You'll also never miss an issue, get delivery straight to your door and make a huge saving of £12 off the cover price. So if you love Koi and you want to save some money, give us a call on telephone number 01202 735 090. It'll be great to hear from you.